to close your eyes and to go within. And breathe into your heart space. Breathe in, in and out through your heart. And think of something or someone that you have deep appreciation and deep love for. And allow that feeling of love and appreciation to expand your heart space. And as we breathe in the silence together, allow this feeling of love and appreciation to emanate throughout your whole body and eventually allow this feeling to emanate throughout this whole sanctuary as we practice the presence together.
resting, resting in the sacred space of the divine. The space which is everywhere present, always and in all ways. The space of peace, space of joy, space of trust. A space in which God is always known. And as I know that, I know that God is the one power, the one presence, in, through, as each and every one, in, through, as each and every circumstance, every situation. And I know that this evening is an evening in which God, the divine, is known yet more deeply, that each person here connects, opens, reunites with the divine within, with the truth of their beings. And so it is. This evening's talk by Reverend Laurie is entitled Divine Guidance. And as I looked at my bookshelf and meditated on what would be the reading for this evening, the words from The Course in Miracles came up. And I read, the Holy Spirit calls you both to remember and to forget. You have chosen to be in a state of opposition in which opposites are possible. As a result, there are choices you must make in the holy state, the will is free, so that its creative power is unlimited, and choice is meaningless. Freedom to choose is the same power as freedom to create, but its application is different. Choosing depends on a split mind. The Holy Spirit, God within, is one way of choosing. God did not leave his children comfortless, even though they chose to leave him. The voice they put in their minds was not the voice for his will, for which the Holy Spirit speaks. The voice of the Holy Spirit does not command because it's incapable of arrogance. It does not demand because it does not seek control. It does not overcome because it does not attack. It merely reminds. It is compelling only because of what it reminds you of. It brings to your mind the other way remaining quiet, even in the midst of the turmoil you may make. The voice for God is always quiet because it speaks of peace. Peace is stronger than war because it heals. War is division, not increase. No one gains from strife. What profiteth it? a man, if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul. If you listen to the wrong voice, you have lost sight of your soul. You cannot lose it, but you cannot know it. It is therefore lost to you because until you choose right. The Holy Spirit is your guide in choosing. He is the part of your mind that always speaks for the right choice because he speaks for God, of God. He is your remaining communication with God, which you can interrupt, but cannot destroy. The Holy Spirit is the way in which God's will is done on earth as it, in, as it is in heaven. Both heaven and earth are in you because the call of both is in your mind. And so it is. Thank you, Candace Young Schultz. That was beautiful. It's nice to share her consciousness with everyone. So this evening I'll be talking about divine guidance and it's actually one of my favorite topics. I just love being divinely guided by spirit. And I know that when you have the essence of the spirit of God within you, you're divinely guided and guarded. You're sustained and you're, and you're maintained. It is the essence of your life. 
And today I'm talking about divine guidance and how you can use divine guidance to create something that's past your present paradigm, past your present reality. It can be a career, a transition into a career or out of a career. It could be having a new baby or a transition of a family member. It could be selling a home or buying a new home. It's anything in your life. When you know you're divinely guided and you're divinely directed, it's like you move and you flow with spirit and you move into that. Because what I know about divine guidance, it is that it is omniscience. It is all-knowing. Divine guidance has a broader perspective than what we can see in our lives. What I know about divine guidance, it is omnipotent. It is all-powerful. For I know there is a powerful good in the universe and you can use it. And this is one way that you can tap into that power. I know that divine guidance is omniactive. I know that you can get divine guidance from reading and watching movies and talking to people and, and being in nature. You can have divine guidance when you're asking open-ended questions to spirit, or you can have gui div divine guidance by something that we all know and we're familiar with, and it is that small, still voice that receive intuition. Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science, he quotes that intuition is God in man, revealing to him the reality of being. Just as instinct guides an animal, intuition guides man, if, if he chooses to do so, <laughs> because we have free will and choice. But when Ernest Holmes says that intuition is God and man revealing to him the realities of being, realities is a very interesting word. And if you read a lot of Ernest Holmes' works, when he says realities, he uses it with a capital R. And what does he mean by that? He means reality is the kingdom of God is within you. That's what he means when he's talking about reality. It is eternality. It is everlasting. It is perfect. It is whole. It is good. And it is the essence of your life. And if you listen to the realities of, realities of being, you will be divinely guided into right action, into right spirit. Then now the, the small r for reality is referring to the relative world, the world of the material, which is fine too, but it's good to know what is the difference. And just like animal is guided through instinct, human, we are guided through intuition if, if you choose to do so. So come on, I know. How many times in your life have you said, oh, darn, if I just would have listened to myself, right? <laughs> it's very, oh my God, I should have brought my umbrella. Because when spirit speaks to us, there is nothing on the material world that looks like we should listen to it because it is not logical, right? But when we listen to it, there's something that is greater that is speaking to us because this love intelligence knows what's going on on a broader perspective, and what I know about divine guidance is that there is no being, human being or spiritual being, that can tell you how to think because we all have free will and choice. For it is us that make, chooses to listen to our divine guidance. But I know, I remember at one time in my life I had said, okay, that's it. From now on, whenever I get, become guided, when I, whenever I have this divine intuition coming through me, I'm going to listen, even if it doesn't make sense. And I was always so grateful for that. But another thing that I know about divine guidance, not only are you being divine, divinely guided for yourself, but divine guidance affects everyone around you. It is interconnected, it is interrelated. So all people involved is connected to your divine guidance. And so I have a wonderful story to uh, explain how this works about one of our con congregants who shared it with, share your story with Reverend Lori. And he's a DJ and he has a website. And there was a couple that was getting married that went to his website and they got together and they interviewed him to use him as the DJ for the wedding. And there was something that within him that told him to ask them a question. He said, is there anyone in your life uh, that can't make it to your wedding? And they're like, oh no, no, everyone's gonna make it, it's all good. And then the groom got really quiet and he said, you know what, my Aunt Rose is not gonna make it. She's 94 years old and she lives in Rhode Island. 
And he said, oh, well, you know, that's no problem. What I can do is I can call her up and I can have her leave a toast on my message machine and then I will play it at the, wedi- at the wedding. And the groom said, oh my God, dude, you're hired. He loved that. So a week before the wedding, he received a phone call from the groom and said, um, did you get that message from my aunt? He was like, yeah, I got the message from your aunt. Did you sure you got the message from my aunt? Yes, I got the message from your aunt. I even downloaded it. It's gonna be no problem. He said, oh my God, my aunt just died this morning. So at the wedding, when everyone was given the toast, he announced Aunt Rose as the last toast. And when she said, raise your glass and toast the bride and groom, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. But not only was this divine intuition for him because he got the job, not only was it for the bride and groom, but it was for all parties. It was for everyone in that room, that whole family. Because there is a love intelligence that's always seeking to express itself through us. And when we listen to it, it always harmonizes for our greater good. When we're in a spiritual practice and we take this home with us and we meditate and we read and you're here on a Wednesday night and you read sacred word and you're in service, you start to practice what you believe and you start to open yourself up to it. But then, after a while, you're practicing and you're practicing and practicing. You move from a practicing to what you believe to a knowing. There's a deep knowing within you that you are divinely guided and guarded. You are maintained and you are sustained at all times. And there's a power in the universe that is so powerful that will protect you in time of danger. That will assist you in times of crossroad. Because maybe you have heard Not the still small voice, but the very loud voice. Have you heard that? That directed you in time of danger? I had one of the congregants that told me a story when she was a a young woman raising her family and she was driving. Uh, It was in a dark night on the road and there was a truck in front of her and the truck started to slow down. Um, And she she thought, well, she'll pass the truck. And all of a sudden there was a loud voice that came over and said, don't pass the truck, all right? So she's continued to follow the truck. And all of a sudden, the truck started to come to a stop. And a loud voice said, lock all the doors in your car. And at the time, it was one of those manual, so she had to reach over and lock all the doors. You know, you just couldn't press a button like we do today. And then the, the truck came to a stop. And something loud came to her and said, pass the truck now. And as she passed the truck, a man got out of the truck and threw a beer bottle at the car. Now, what would have happened if she didn't listen to that voice? She could have been killed. She could have been raped. He could have gone to jail. But it was divine guidance for all people involved. Obviously, he was drunk. And I know that when I was living in my vision to become a minister, I had a crossroads in my life. I knew where I was going to ministerial school. I was very confident of it. But then all of a sudden, I had another opportunity. And I said, oh, no, I can't take that. There's no way. I was at home and I was taking a shower and all of a sudden it was a loud voice. I never would have listened to the still small voice in this situation that said, this is your path. I was like, really? Oh gosh, okay. So I took the path and I'm so grateful I did. It was such an amazing path. And the school that I chose, it closed down a year later. Hmm, yeah, spirit is good. So there's other ways that you can be divinely guided, not only from that still small voice or that loud voice. You can be divinely guided in life through asking questions. And Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith um, created the life visioning process. When we know that we, when we ask spirit questions, we always receive an answer. So You can buy the life visioning process through a CD or one of the practitioners can take you through this practice. But this is when you go into a meditation and you come into the realm of unconditional love. And then you ask open-ended questions. What is God's idea for my life? What must I become? What must I give up? And what else must I know? And as you are asking these questions, you're sitting in a stance where you're listening to the greatest secret of your life to come to you and you write notes. And this is actually where I was guided into ministry, where I had my calling. And there's another way that you can be divinely guided through open-ended questions. It's actually one of the congregants shared this with me. There's a website called S-A-R-K, 
Sark. Dot com and it's very very cute and there's a woman that started sitting down and asking questions and as she asked questions she would write the answers down it was like automatic writing so what would happen is spirit would work through you and answer the questions on the paper so it's sark.com and you can go on a line and you can downline the inner wisdom self-activation guide. And let me read to you a couple letters that she wrote that are so adorable. She wrote them to herself through doing the self-activation guide. Dearest, adorable, and most precious Susan, I see you with so much love. I see you in your resistance, avoidance, avoidance, and sometimes frantic attempts to avoid your holy purpose and intentions. I am ready to deliver all that you seek and all that you need. Just ask. Spend some quiet moments with me and allow me to speak through you. I will give you the grace, the courage, the ability to bring your intentions more fully to life. I adore you completely. And here's another letter that was written to her. To Susan by Susan. <laughs> To my gumdrop, my pure love, Susan. <laughs> I am with you whenever you go, where, whatever you do. Every word you write, every step you take, every blink you blink. Whenever you doubt yourself or allow your inner critic to speak loudly, I am there. Whenever you forget to ask me for help, I am there. Whenever you feel fat or ashamed or blinded by your ego, I am there. Remember this especially when you try to hide from your awareness of my total unconditional love. And put this note where you can see it and read it. I know your goodness. I see your radiance. I understand where you are and how you stumble. You are safe and all is well. You are whole, you are complete, and you are perfect. And I love you everlastingly. So there is an inner mentor, an inner guru within yourself that you can ask open-ended questions, such as, how can I create more? Which path shall I explore? What will further support me on this path? And so she was saying in her, you can download this little uh, booklet from her. She was saying as she practiced this on a regular basis, it went from a practice to a deep knowing. And all of a sudden, her life became divinely guided in every area. When she would go see movies, when she would write books, when she would talk to people, it was the essence of who she was. And she was living and she was moving and she was being in this practice. And so what I know uh, for divine guidance is that there's two ways um, that you can manifest things in your life. And you probably can understand what I'm going to be talking about. You can manifest things from your life from the spiritual world, right? And when you do that, you're moving through life with ease and grace. And you're moving into the flow of your vision of whatever you're created. Or you can manifest life from uh, the material path, the relative world. And for many years, all I knew was the relative world. I couldn't even hear my divine guidance. I wouldn't even listen to it because it had no idea what it was talking about, right? And so <laughs> there's five steps that I know that you, what you can do to create something wonderful in your life by listening to this divine guidance. And the first step is to have a vision. And when you are a spiritual person and you have a vision, you kind of move into this vision. And by seeing it and feeling it and sensing it, it becomes who you are. Now, in the material world, when you have something you want to get, it's usually a goal. I have a goal. I have something I want to get that is outside of me and I want to bring it to me. And sometimes that can bring uh, worry and fear and competition in your life. And not that it can all the time. These are just examples of the spiritual world and working in the material world. The second thing, what you want to do when you want to manifest something in your life, is you want to accept it. This is very important because I think some of us mess this part up. You want to accept the gift that the universe wants to give to you. So when you're dealing with the spiritual world, you know that you are a divine, individualized expression of God. So it is your birthright to accept the gifts of spirit because God made manifest through you. But when you're dealing with the material world, um, and I know from my life, there was times where I felt like I wasn't enough. 
where I had a very low self-esteem. And when I was trying to become a professional dancer, I recognized this when I was in college. But what happened was that my goal to be a professional dancer was more powerful than my little ego, my little self. And so I had to come up with a reason. Why did I think I deserved this? I actually had to come up with a reason of why I thought I deserved this. I didn't think it was my divine birthright. And I did come up with a reason. A reason I felt it with my heart and my mind and my body and my soul and because the universe responds to who you are, of course it worked for me. But it's so much easier to just recognize that you are a beautiful expression of the divine spirit and you don't have to compete for anything or anyone for something that you want. And then the third, the third step to manifesting a vision is to surrender it to the greater good. And when you're living in the essence of spirit, you surrender it because then when you surrender it, you tap into the field of infinite possibilities, infinite potentiality. And when you surrender it, the universe says, yes, let me take care of it. You sit back and relax. And the universe is going to move the mountains and move the, 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 the planets all and part the Red Sea off for your higher good. Now, when you're living in the material world, you're going to make sure you control the outcome. I know how I'm going to get it. I know who's going to get it to me. And I know when I'm going to get it. And you know what happens when that happens? It's called suffering. <laughs> it's called pain and suffering. It's called hitting your head up against the wall. And I have many bruises from that. So it was beautiful coming into this teaching like, oh my God, life is going to be so much easier. I can just let it happen and let it flow. You, you, you collapse the field of infinite possibilities when, you ha when you're a control freak. When you just allow God to do everything for you, it, it's just life is so much easier. It's more of a divine flow. And then the fourth step, because you're not done yet, you just let it go. You can't just let it go and walk away. No. You planted a seed in the ground, and now you have to feed it, and you have to love it, and you have to nurture it. And you have to feed it, and you have to love it, and you have to nurture it. And you have to think about it, and you have to talk with like-minded people, and you have to read about it, and you have, it has to be the essence of who you are. And when it's the essence of who you are, the universe can't help but to bring you that which you are, right? But when you're in the material world, it's called fear, doubt, and worry. Oh my God, am I going to get it? <laughs> How am I going to do this? I'm not getting what I want. Not all the time. This is just an example, okay? You can set goals and you don't have to deal with fear, doubt, and worry, but a lot of times that sets in. So you're wondering why you're not getting your goal because there's fear, doubt, and the worry. And then the fifth step, there's one more step to really manifesting something in your life, and that is being open to the knowingness that you are divinely guided, listening to that still small voice, listening to the larger voice, practicing the visioning pra um, practice, asking open-ended questions and, and writing about it, and being open when you're seeing movie movies and talking to people and when you're in nature, oh, I love to take walks and just let that flow, divine guidance to flow through me. It's a beautiful thing, right? In the relative world, what happens is that you can't hear it. <laughs> when I get a divine guidance, it's like, that doesn't make sense and I'm not doing it. I'm not carrying an umbrella. It's not going to go in my backpack. It's too heavy. So there's two ways of doing things. It's my way and it is thy way. It is your way or it is God's way. And when you're living and you're moving in the essence of spirit, you are flowing with the divine. And then you move into your vision. Because number one, you feel it and you sense it and you know it. Number two, it is your divine birthright, so you open yourself up to it, right? Number three, you surrender and let go and just allow the infinite possibilities, the infinite potentiality to come into your life. And then you talk about it and you hang out with like-minded people and you read about it. And then when the intuition comes, you move with it, you know? And when you move with it, it's like, ah, oh, this is for the better good of all people. It harmonizes with everyone. And there was a, a book that I read before I, I um, mind mapped this talk. I don't, I don't write my talks. I mind map them out. And it was called Inner Guidance. The teaching was a little different, but the spiritual principles were the same. And her name was Ann Butcher. 
And she had this fabulous story in there. And she had just um, almost lost her life, but through divine guidance, she didn't lose her life. And so she didn't have a lot of money in her pocket. And also she just, through divine guidance, got a new teaching job. And she taught philosophy in a school. And what she would do is she would go into the school room and she would put up quotes on the board. And the quotes would come from Plato or uh, Socrates, Emerson, and... Um, then they would, the group would talk about the quotes. And so this is how she ta taught her students spiritual practice, through the quotes that she put on the board. And once in a while, there would be a quote that would come out of her, okay? It just divinely came out of her, and she has no idea where it came from. So this quote, it was, I can create a miracle in a minute or the impossible in three days. Whoa. And her students were really chewing on this one. So everyone's going back and forth. And at the end of the class, the students were like, you know, we, we want to see this happen. We want, we want to see you do this. <laughs> so they wanted a demonstration. Of course they wanted a demonstration. But she was knowledgeable enough. She had enough experience that she was living in the knowing of divine guidance. No one had, she, it was, it's not something that she believed. She knew is exactly who she was. So she said, okay. And she thought about it. And she said, you know, something I really want to manifest in my life is I've never been on a hot air balloon ride. And I can tell you right now, because I came from um, recovering from my, my accident, I don't have the money to do it. And so the kids are like, all right, you got three days to do it. So she said, okay, well, let me just take you through the visioning process. Let's go through the process. So she asked them all to get into the basket, the hot air balloon, and just to release the, uh, the ropes from the ground and just to get into the air and look at all the colors on the balloon. And wow, you're passing the trees. And look at the birds that go by. And look, oh my God, the view is amazing, right? So you, she's feeling and then sensing it and they're jubilant and they're happy and how do you feel and what do you see? So she took them through this great visualization process. And then after it was done, she said, okay, now I want everyone to accept the vision, okay? Accept it as already done and I'm gonna be having this hot air balloon. And then she surrendered it. Okay, give it up, let's all surrender it and everything is for the greatest good, this or something better. So that was Friday, all the kids left. She went home, she had three days to manifest this. And she knew what to do. She went home and she went on the computer and she started looking at hot air balloons. She started reading about it and talking about it. And then her and her young daughter went to the laundromat that night. And there was a kid that came into the laundromat and he said, I have one ticket left from Children's Hospital. I'm trying to sell this ticket for a raffle. It's five bucks. Do you want to buy it? She's like, no, I don't have any money in my pocket. The loud voice, not the still small voice, said, buy the ticket. <laughs> She's thinking, oh, God. So she bought the ticket. The next morning, she got up. She got on the computer again because she knows when you give to charity that the universe gives back tenfold, right? So she gets on the computer and starts focusing on the hot air balloon ride again. And then all of a sudden, she gets a phone call. This is Children's Hospital. You won the raffle. You won a hot air balloon ride. You have to be there on Sunday at 10 o'clock because we have the media there. <laughs> so she knew what she was doing. She, she didn't believe in it. She knew it. She visualized it, right? She accepted it, and then she surrendered it, and then she focused on it, and then she followed divine guidance. So what did you light your candle for? What is the vision that you have in your life that you would like to see happen? How do you want to be divinely guided? I'm going to invite you to close your eyes right now and to go within. And to think about that vision that you had set when you came into this room of something within your life that is beyond your present paradigm that you would like to create. And just look at that. Look at, at it as if it's already done in the mind of God. Where are you? And who's with you? What are the colors that you see? What does it feel like? What does it smell like? Does it bring you joy? Does it bring you peace of mind? Just be in that moment of the vision as if it's already done in the mind of God. And now just open your heart and accept that vision as your life. It is done. You are a divine individualized expression of God. It is your divine birthright to accept this gift. And now just release that gift. Allow it to go, that or something better. And this evening when you go home, 
Think about it, read about it, talk about it, and allow the universe to guide you. Maybe it's questions you have to ask. Maybe it's reading or writing or walking in nature. Just allow the essence of spirit to move through you because within you is the kingdom of God. For you, they are the essence of life. And as we are here closed, with our eyes closed and our hearts open, stay with me as I invite Jerry back up on the stage. There you are, babe. Just stay with me right here, right now. Just recognize in the divine mind is your mind. For the kingdom of God is within you. For you are the essence of spirit. For there's only one life and one mind and one presence and one power that's always seeking to express itself in, through, and around all people, over and around and through. It is the perfection of life. And I know that my life is the life of God. I know that I am the essence of divine guidance. I live and move and I have my being in the presence. And as I know this for myself, I know this for each person in this room, is that perfection of life. And I know what's seeking to express in your life beyond your present paradigm is that vision that you have in your mind. And the universe is saying, yes, I want to express that for you. I want, to, I want to move the mountains and I want to move the planets all for your greater good, for you and everyone in your life, for that is the expression of spirit. So as you open your heart and you accept this gift and you surrender it to the greater good and allow the greater good to take over your life and to bring that manifestation into play, because I know it's already done in the mind of God as I release my word into the law knowing that it is done and so it is. Thank you. Thank you. This opens your heart, doesn't it? So now this is the time of our sacred giving. I would like to invite our ushers to come forward. And Melanie, could we have our affirmative um, affirmation up? So this is the time where we demonstrate our universal flow of life. So as we give, we do receive. And your gift um, blesses Seaside Center for Spiritual Living it allows us to grow and expand in the consciousness of God as our life. Not only as our life, but each person goes out into the universe and it is for the greater good of the universe. So I invite you to take your gift and to place it over your heart and to repeat with me our, giving, our affirmative giving affirmation. Freely I give, 
Freely I receive. I'm immersed in the universal flow, knowing my gift does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. It was beautiful. <laughs> so this is a time where we're, we're um, really putting our teaching to practice, where you can bring someone in your life into the circle of love that may need a healing. And so what I'm going to ask you is to raise your hand, and when you name their name, I'm going to hit the Tibetan bell. And I actually got this from the sound meditation that we support Nepal. And as I hit the bell, we're just going to be bringing their consciousness into the room. And then we're going to know the truth for them, that they are a perfect spiritual being. As I know that for them, we know there is a divine healing. And so right now for myself, I know that I want to bring my Aunt Kathy into this room for healing. Anyone else have someone to bring in? Cousin Teresa. Cousin Teresa. Anyone over here? So the circle of love is complete. Mm. It's beautiful. I invite you to close your eyes as we bring our loved ones into the room here, recognizing that the circle of love is eternal. There is no beginning and no ending. It is the essence of who we are. For within this circle of love is a complete with wholeness and oneness and goodness and divine right action and divine love. And as Ernest Holmes says, that the circle of love is complete. It comprehends all. It includes all. It binds all together with cords of everlasting love. For I cannot depart from its presence nor wander from its care. That circle of love is complete within me. That circle of love is complete within each person in this room. It is complete with each person that we hold high in the consciousness of light, in the consciousness of love. For I know that there is an infinite flow of love that runs through each and every person. I know each person is a perfect God, a perfect man, a perfect being. I know that we hold them high in the consciousness of light and the consciousness of love. I know that if any person is, is experienced a dis-ease, I know that they are perfect in this moment. They are whole and they are complete. They are a beautiful light of spiritual being. I know that anyone is, 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 is experiencing disharmony. I know there's a divine order in their life of love and light and wholeness, and they are in divine action right here and right now. I know that if anybody is experiencing lack or limitation, I know that we live in an infinite universe, and it is opulence, and there is always so much joy and so much abundance in the world to be had. And I know that if anyone is going through a transition in life, I know that they are eternal. There is only love and light that is all around them right here and right now. And I know that my mind and my mind is healed in the mind of God right here and right now. And whatever I said is already done in the mind of God. And I am grateful for this, for I accept the gift. I accept the gift for all people as I release my word into the law of mind, knowing that it is done, and so it is. 
So uh, I know the announcement says June 29th we're having the dances, but it's actually June 26th. That was my fault. I made a typo. It's okay. It's all good. So what I love, could you put up um, our universal blessing? As I love the Sufi dances, and we have them once a month. And it's just a way for us to sing and dance and express the presence of God as our life and allow that to flow out into the eternal good. Because there's many beings in our lives, be besides our family, besides ourselves, that are, that are in strife that um, are in bondage. And so we just want to say our universal blessing for all beings, all sentient beings. Together, let's say, oh, may all beings be well and happy. May all beings be free from strife. May all beings return to love. Peace be with you forevermore. Candace and Martha, I just want to please come up and join us. I want to uh, thank a couple of people here, and as I am thanking them, please thank them in your hearts also, for gratitude brings more love and more joy in your heart. Melanie Bennett, thank you very much on sound. Ginny Mills, thank you for giving your time and your talent here. And Dennis Mills and Melissa. Gregory Neville, my mother still loves you. Thank you on video. Annie Prescott, thank you for grounding us in spirit. And Candace, I love you. Thanks for holding us in light. Martha, Martha Khan is a, a voiceover artist and she's also a teacher. Thank you so much for you, you know, using your talents here. And Jerry, you are beautiful. Thank you. And Jim Bianchi. And Bruce in the bookstore. Thanks. <laughs> Jim, why don't you sing us out? Everyone, please stand for our closing song. Hold on to hands. Here we go. Blessed always, blessed always, for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest. We rest in God and say amen. Thank you. I want to thank all those who shared their story with Reverend Mor Lori tonight. It was great. May you walk in peace. And I want your emails. <laughs>